No Solar, Life in the Spirit World, also known as Astral City, A Spiritual Journey, written by Francisco Candido Javier, also known as Chico Javier, and dictated by the spirit Andre Luis. A New Friend. Prefaces in general introduce authors praising their merits and commenting on their personalities. Here, the situation is different. Our incarnate friends would search in vain for a doctor named Andre Luis, listed in conventional records. Sometimes, Anonymity is a child of real understanding and true love. In order to redeem a disgraceful past, former names are changed in the process of reincarnation. Temporary forgetfulness acts as a blessing of divine mercy. Andre too has needed to pull the curtain over himself. That is why we cannot divulge the true identity of this terrestrial doctor and human author. Instead, we introduce him as a new friend and brother in eternity. In order to bring valuable insights to his earthbound brothers and sisters, he had to renounce all conventions, including his own name. He did so to avoid hurting beloved hearts that are still tangled in the old cloaks of illusion. Those who are harvesting the ripe ears of corn must neither offend those who are planting some distance away, nor disturb the unripe crops that are still developing. We are aware that this book is not unique, that other entities have already talked about the conditions of life beyond the grave. Nevertheless, we have long hoped to bring into our spiritual circle someone who might transmit to other persons the value of his own experience, with all the possible details for rightly understanding the laws that preside over the efforts of diligent and well-meaning discarnate individuals in spheres invisible to the human eye, although intimately connected to the planet nonetheless. Of course, many friends will smile when they read certain passages of the narrative. However, the unusual has always caused surprise in all eras. For instance, who didn't smile some time back when someone talked about aviation, electricity, or radiophony? Surprise! Perplexity and doubt are normal for students who have not yet completed all their lessons. Such is more than natural. It is really only fair. Thus, we will refrain from commenting on other people's insights. Every reader must analyze for him or herself what he or she reads. Therefore, let us talk only about the essential aim of this work. Spiritism is rapidly increasing its number of followers. Thousands of individuals are becoming interested in its endeavors, methods, and experiments. In such an immensely new area, however, people should not neglect themselves. It is not enough simply to investigate phenomena and adhere verbally to our particular creed, to improve statistics, to indoctrinate the consciousness of others, to proselytize, or to win the public's opinion, no matter how respectable this all may be in the physical realm. What is essential is that we acquire an understanding of our infinite potential and that we use it in the service of the good. Earth's human beings have not been disinherited. They are God's children engaged in constructive labor and clothed in flesh. And they are students attending a worthwhile school where they must learn to evolve. The human struggle is their opportunity, their tool, and their textbook. Communication with the invisible is a sacred activity which is acting to restore pure Christianity. However, let none neglect their own needs in the place they occupy by the Lord's will. Andre Louise comes to tell you, dear reader, that the greatest surprise of physical death is that it places us face to face with our own conscience, wherein we build our own heaven, remain in purgatory, or immerse ourselves in the infernal abyss. He reminds us that the earth is a sacred workshop and that nobody will despise it without paying the price for the terrible error to which he or she has subjected his or her own heart. Keep Andre's experience in the book of your soul. It states that it is not enough for individuals to cling to their human existence that it is necessary to know how to profit from such an existence with dignity, that the steps of a Christian, whatever his or her religious school may be, should move surely towards Christ, and that in our doctrinal area, we need both spiritism and spiritualism, but most of all, spirituality. A message from Andre Luis. Life never ceases. Life is an eternal font and death is only an obscure game of illusion. A great river follows its course before joining the immense sea. Likewise, the soul also follows its course of various roads and goes through different stages. It too receives streams of knowledge here and there, augmenting the way it expresses itself and purifying its character before reaching the eternal ocean of wisdom. The closing of our corporeal eyes is a very simple process. Changing out of the physical cloak does not solve the fundamental problem of enlightenment, however, because changing out of one's cloak has nothing to do with the profound solutions to the problems of destiny and being. Ah, paths of souls, mysterious ways of the heart. It is necessary to travel them before attempting the supreme equation of eternal life. It is crucial that you live out their drama, that you know them in detail by detail during the long process of spiritual perfection. 
It would be extremely childish to believe that the mere lowering of the curtain could settle the transcendental questions concerning the infinite. One life, one act, one body, one garment, one century, one day, one task, one experience, one triumph, one acquisition, one death, one breath of renewal. How many lives, how many bodies, how many centuries, how many tasks, how many triumphs, and how many deaths do we still need? And the scholar of religious philosophy speaks of final decisions and definitive positions. Alas, everywhere there are those who are learned in doctrine but illiterate in spirit. It takes a great effort for human beings to enroll in the school of the gospel of Christ, an admission process that nearly always happens in a strange way. They find themselves alone in the company of the master, struggling with a difficult course, learning lessons without visible professors, and listening to long lectures without spoken words. Very long, therefore, is our laborious journey. Our poor efforts aim only to give us an idea of that fundamental truth. Thus I am thankful, my friends. I appear to you in all the anonymity that obeys fraternal charity. Human existence presents a great number of fragile vessels that cannot yet contain the whole truth. Moreover, at this time we are only interested in the profound experience itself, along with its collective values. We won't torment anyone with the idea of eternity. First and foremost, the vessels must become stronger. We will only provide some light news to the eager spirits of our brothers and sisters on the path of spiritual realization. Those who understand, as we do, that the spirit blows wherever it pleases. And now, my friends, may my thanks fall silently upon this paper, retreating into the great silence of sympathy and gratitude. Attraction and acknowledgement, love and joy live in the soul. You can be sure that I hold similar values for you within the sanctuary of my heart. May the Lord bless us. Andre Luis.